Hello, welcome to this tutorial where in Unity we're going to do some stuff from script. So I've got a simple scene here, but let's make a script to, uh, to get going. Um, I've already made a, a previous video for instantiating objects in a scene and for changing material. So if you're interested for knowing how to do that, um, if you go to my previous video, you can have a look at this script here, Grow Babes, and I'll just put it on the screen for your reference. Um, so this is how to use Create Primitive to create capsules on the screen, change the position of the, the object that you've just made, um, add a component to the object, in this case a mesh renderer, and then to, sorry, no, to, to change the material color, and then to add the rigid body component. So this time, what if we wanted to generate a from code a object in front of the little ship um, which I've called the me which was that little flying thing looked like a little helicopter um, every time we press the space bar so that's what we're gonna do so in assets folder I'm gonna go to create go to C sharp script and let's call it um, make make sphere make sphere sounds like Shakespeare the make sphere so I'll open this up in the editor. I'm using VS Studio, I believe. And we've got start function and an update. So we can take away the start function. We don't want this script to do anything to begin with. But then in update, we want to wait for an input. So we're going to ask a question. If our input um, get key up, so that's going to wait for a key to be pressed and then released, get key up. If I write get key, that will return true if I just hold the key down, which is what you might want, but I just want to do it every time I lift my finger. So if get key up, and then we need to tell it which key it's looking for. So we can use Unity's built in phrase key code, and then I want to go to space, which I believe is capital S. So there we go. So I've asked if we press and release the spacebar, we want to. Um, create primitive. Actually, this is what we did in the last video. We used create primitive. This time, let's use instantiate. Instantiate. Um, and we can say my sphere in there. Now, the problem with this, obviously, is that Unity or this script doesn't know what my sphere means. And we want to refer to a um, prefab that we've already made. So at the top here, no, not at the top here, at the top here within the actual class, we're going to write um, public game object my sphere. And because we've made this public, when we go to the editor and we attach this, where should we attach this script? Let's, the obvious one would be to attach it to the me, which is my little player, but I'm going to create uh, a new empty uh, game object, which just has a transform, so it doesn't have an appearance, doesn't have a collide or anything like that, and let's just call it, um, let's call it manager, because it manages some spheres and things like that, and now we can attach our make sphere script to that. So now we can see see the my sphere variable because I made it public in the script. So it's this here. So that means we could make a prefab and drag it in to this space. So let's do that right now. So in our scene, let's just create a 3D object, a sphere. There we are. And um, let's just change the material so we need to give it a material in fact I've got a material handy here I'm just going to drag that material on you can make your own material I'm sure you just right click uh, create material and then um, choose the color and the, the properties the metallic how, mu how metallic it looks and things like that and stuff. anyway so we've got our prefab um, there he is and we'll drag that into our assets folder from the hierarchy and that makes it into a prefab which means I can delete the object from the scene or can I there we go 
delete the object from the scene. Um, it doesn't matter, I can just drag new ones in to the scene like that because it's a prefab. That's just for those of you who are not sure what a prefab is. And that means if I make a change to this prefab, all the other prefabs will be changed as well. So prefabs are handy. Right. I'm having trouble deleting stuff. There we go. Delete those from my scene. So we've got the prefab in there. Right, so now back to the manager. Let's drag the prefab from our assets folder into, not the scene, but into this variable. So it's not actually in the scene yet until we make it. So what happens now is if we press space, we're going to get a sphere. Let's just see if that's working. So it's the, the manager object that's just sitting invisibly, can't collide with anything in our scene somewhere, doesn't matter where, it's waiting for us to press the space bar. So I press the space bar, and I pressed it three times, so we should get three spheres. I've got a sphere up there, I don't know why that's there. How strange. Right, I've got one, two, three, four spheres. I don't know why the mystery one appeared, but yep, they're appearing, and they're appearing at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And why are they doing that? Let's have a look. Where is my manager? My manager object is at 0, 0.22.0. 0. So when we instantiate a an object, a prefab, it's given the position of the object that the script is attached to. So this script is attached to the manager, which is at 0, 0.22.0, 0, which might be handy, but we don't want that to happen. We want our object to appear in front of our little... Our little um, vehicle which is called the me so we need to tell the make sphere script about where the vehicle is so we want to say something like this once we've instantiated it we want to say um, uh, sphere dot transform oh my auto correct is changing things around I'll just call it my sh my shush my shush your transform position equals, and then I want to say something like, uh, well, I called it the me, so I'll call it the me. I want you to be, oh God, how do I, <laughs> how do I stop that happening? There we go. I want you to be at my vehicle's um, transform position plus, and I want to go forward a little bit. So let's say vector three. Actually, that will just be vector. That will just move forward along the z-axis in world space. So I want to say, then I want to go in the f the me's. Um, oh no! Sorry, that must be really annoying to watch. What do I do to stop that? There we go. Me dot um, transform. Now I can just put forward, and that will mean the forward relative to which direction my vehicle is facing, times how like far ahead. So let's say, I don't know, nine unity units. Okay, so hopefully the code's okay there, but we just need to tell the code what the shush is, what the me is. So first, we can say... We want a game object, just a temporary one. This will this temporary object, because we're creating it inside this function, it will disappear, or rather inside the if statement, it will um, be destroyed, be deleted um, when that func when that scope completes. So game object shush equals this. So instantiate, just like create primitive in the previous video, it will return a game object, in this case a little sphere. So it's been 10 minutes, sorry for the horrible sound, but there we go. Um, then we can get hold of that object and, and change its position. Now we just need to tell Unity, um, sorry, this script, what 
object we want to refer to and position our sphere next to. So let's do that in a sophisticated way. Let's reintroduce our start function. So this is a function that will run as soon as we like start the game because this script is already in the scene. And we want to say um, that there's a game object called me. Or rather, we need to have a, sorry, we need to have a game object up here called me. And I have to create it up here so that all the functions can refer to it. So I don't have to um, initialize it here. I can say me because the, the script already knows what the me is. It's some kind of game object. The me equals, and now I want to, in the script, go and find it. So I can use this function. I can use the find function. And then I can put the name of the object that I want to go and find. There we go. As easy as that. Um, and I've called it me. Just, just for ease's sake, oh, let's call that, I don't know, player. And in the script, I have to change this bit to player. I can leave this variable as me because that's just a variable I'm using within the script. It doesn't mean that that game object's name outside in the editor. So I've just changed it to player to make that difference a bit clearer. So we've got game object me. It's going to go and find the player. And now we can refer to that game object's transform and its position. Right, so let's go and run this. If we press the space bar, we should have a um, we should have a sphere appearing in front of us. Yes. I can press it as many times as I like. Wow, and we've got spheres appearing in front of us. So that would be handy if you're creating like a a weapon or oh just glitch through the the train that's just uh, <laughs> stop the scene there if you're creating like a, a drawing program or an imaging program or laying eggs laying luminescent eggs there um so we've done some nice things through the script there um right what if i'm going to finish the 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 um the video soon what if we also didn't want to have to drag our... Um, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh. <coughs> oh my god. Excuse me. Sorry for that. What if <laughs> we didn't want to have to drag a prefab from here into our script there? Can I delete... How do I delete that? Right, I've deleted that. What if we wanted to get it just by using the script from code? So to do that, what you need to do is create yourself a folder called resources with a capital R. So you go to create, go up to the top folder, make a folder called resources in your assets, and then just drag your prefab into there. Okay, so made a folder called resources, drag your prefab or whatever, it, we could do it later on with materials and things into that folder. Then what we can do, we can say, let's do it in here. It's probably the worst place to do it, but there we go. So we want a game object, um, a game object called, um, let's call it my PF, meaning my prefab, and we're going to say it's going to equals, and then we're going to grab it now, we're going to load it from that folder. So if you write resources dot load, and then um, put in the name of your prefab, what did I call it? Sphere? Sphere with a capital S. There we go, sphere, and we've got to write what type it is. So it's type of game object. There we go, and we can finish that function. 
as oh as game object right i've done something wrong oh yeah i have to put the close my brackets there there we go so we're just using this function load something um, and then you tell it that the load function what you want it's a it's a game object as a game object we want to return it as a game object so my pf will be the prefab so instead of my sphere we don't know what that is now we're going to write um uh my pf there we go so my pf will be uh, whatever prefab we've loaded into here. I'm not sure why it's showing up red there. Let's just see if we can run it. Type or namespace definition or end of file expected. So I, I haven't got the right amount of brackets. I put in an extra bracket accidentally. That's all I've done. Save the script. See if we can run. Press space bar. Yes. So it's doing exactly the same thing as before, but we're loading the prefab from the script. If I have a look at manager, have a look at the script, there's no game object in there. We haven't dragged and dropped the prefab. We've just done everything from the script. Right. So. Go on, Dottie. My dog has just jumped onto the bed. Oh, let's just show you. There we go. There is Dot. Can you see Dot? Yes. So thank you very much for coding. This is a dog. And um, goodbye. Let me know what you want to see in the next video if um, you manage to watch this video before I post up the next one. Goodbye.